Hello, I'm Sean Ditchko with the University of British Columbia Department of Physics and Astronomy. In this video, I'm going to measure the area and volume of this tabletop. It sounds easy, right? But not today. I'm going to make a short story long by taking into account the uncertainty of the measurements. By the end of this video, you will understand and see examples of the difference between random and systematic uncertainties. You will be able to impress your lab instructors with your insightful analysis of uncertainties. The reason we have to deal with uncertainties at all is to know how much trust we should have in a number. Uncertainty summarizes quantitatively all the different factors that affect the quality of your measurement. So let's get to work. We're going to start by measuring the dimensions of this tabletop. Uh, perhaps we want to know if it'll fit in an alcove of our house. Even if you don't mention it, you really are making uncertainty estimates every day, even with such casual routine measurements like the size of a piece of furniture. Suppose someone says this alcove that you're going to fit the table into is 1.3 meters wide. And you make a measurement of this table and find that it's only 1.20 meters. And you figure, well, this should fit. But what if it doesn't? Wouldn't you be surprised? I mean, if you used a ruler, the uncertainty in your measurement might be plus or minus 0 0.01. So the table would go... You know, maybe it could be as much as plus 0 0.01, that's one centimeter, for a total of, you know, at this end, 1.21 meters. Or maybe it could be less than that, 1.19 meters. This would be the, uh, the range of your possible measurement, including this plus or minus 0 0.01 meters. And that's a, you know reasonably um, generous error for a ruler. You might, error might even be less than that. So this table, which at the most is 1.21 meters long, should definitely fit in this alcove of 1.3 meters, right? Well, if you say that, you're really making an assumption about the uncertainty of this alcove measurement. And this is my point, that even when an uncertainty is not stated, you're still making assumptions about the uncertainty. And if you, if you think that this will definitely fit, then you're assuming that the uncertainty of this number is less than 0 0.09 meters. This is the largest uncertainty you could have and be guaranteed to have the table fit in, in the alcove. Well, what if somebody was using their feet to do this measurement instead of a ruler? Well, then maybe the error is as much as 20 centimeters. Who knows? Maybe 0.2 meters. Um, in this case, the table might still fit in the alcove. It's hard to say, but you have less trust in this alcove measurement because it could be as small as 1.1 meters, in which case it wouldn't fit. It could also be as much as 1.5 meters at the most, in which case the table does fit. But the point is that with this larger uncertainty, you have less trust in this alcove measurement. So the only difference between making an everyday measurement um, without the uncertainty and versus making a measurement in a science context is that in science, you actually write down what the uncertainty is without, or in, instead of uh, just making assumptions about it. So uncertainty gives an estimate of how much trust should be placed in a measurement. And if the uncertainty in this alcove is a 0 0.09 meters, they should even have another significant figure on their 1.3 measurement. It should be 1.30 meters. So having uncertainty stated explicitly, or like written down, um, avoids the type of confusion that could have happened here with um, the tabletop being measured with a nice ruler versus maybe the alcove being measured uh, by somebody's feet and and then the table not fitting because that alcove is actually 1.1 meters for some reason suppose we're interested in the area of the tabletop imagine that it's an array of solar panels and we want to calculate its power output which depends on how much area is exposed to the sun since there's no such thing as an area measuring device We'll have to make do with a linear measurement device, also known as a ruler. And, and then we're going to calculate the area by multiplying the length by the width. We're going to estimate the uncertainty in each length measurement. And uh, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that. And then we'll use a formula to calculate the estimated uncertainty in our area result. At the moment, we're going to be talking about a type of uncertainty called random uncertainty which is different from systematic uncertainty. And I'll talk about the difference in a moment. 
And I'm going to use the words uncertainty and error interchangeably. But uh, we think the word uncertainty is better since the word error suggests that you've made a mistake, which is the wrong idea. Rather than suggesting a mistake, by stating an uncertainty, which is also called error, you're owning up to the fact that there's a limit on the precision of any measurement and how much trust should be placed in your measurement. The amount of uncertainty you estimate for a measurement is a judgment call. So let's talk about some guidelines to make that judgment. There is no single recipe for estimating uncertainty, which is why this topic requires some thought. But here's our suggestion. Make multiple measurements and the random uncertainty will be the spread between the different results. Now, if you're looking for an even more sophisticated method, you could do many, many, many measurements of the same thing. And instead of taking the spread between your biggest and smallest, you could take the, uh, you know, a spread that's equal to 68% of that difference between the biggest and smallest. And the reasons why are complicated to explain, but that's what a, you know, a scientist, you know, who wanted the best estimate of error would probably do. If you happen to get the same result in every measurement, well, in that case, you're not allowed to celebrate the complete elimination of error because that's not even possible. There's still uncertainty in your measurement. In the case where all measurements are the same, assume that the random uncertainty is one half the smallest unit of measure. On this meter stick, for example, if every measurement I was making came out the same, then I'd have to take one half the smallest unit of measure, which is a millimeter. So the smallest tick mark on this um, meter stick represents a millimeter, and so the error would be plus or minus 0.5 millimeters, or 0 0.0005 meters. Now, even if you claim to have visual perception skills that allow you to distinguish less than half a millimeter, like a quarter of a millimeter, you should keep in mind that analog devices like this meter stick or this multimeter, they're not designed or even calibrated to provide better precision. If the uh, uh, current or voltage in your circuit increases by um, you know, less than half of one of these tick marks, the meter may not even move to reflect that because it's not designed to. So you can't have precision better than half the smallest tick mark on your measuring device. Let's estimate the random uncertainty in our ruler measurement. And there are at least two things contributing to the random uncertainty. Not only is there uncertainty in the uh, right end, but there's also uncertainty in how well I've aligned the ruler on the left end of the table. And we'll have to estimate the uncertainty in each end. Since this ruler has some thickness, there's a minor parallax effect. And what I mean is when you look at it from uh, this angle, it looks like it's about 1.061 meters long. Whereas when you look at it from another angle here, it looks like it's about 1.068 or 069 meters. And uh, of course, we'll position ourselves directly above the ruler, but nevertheless, this parallax effect still presents a bit of a challenge to our, uh, our measuring abilities. Another thing we should consider is that the edge of the table is a little bit rounded. It's not even a really distinct, clear edge. So I would say, each measurement, you know, on the right end and on the left end of this table would have a uh, random uncertainty of about one millimeter. And there's no magic formula used to arrive at that number. It just seems reasonable in light of the uh, considerations we talked about here. So now since there's two ends, the total random uncertainty in the table length we'll say is two millimeters, one millimeter error for each end. And if I wanted to be really sure and my estimate was good, then I'd have uh, some of my neighbors repeat this measurement and see how much spread there is in our results. Now, our uncertainty estimate would be different if we had a nice machined piece of metal with distinct edges being measured with a caliper, maybe. So it's really a judgment call what your uncertainty estimate is. It depends on your materials and it depends on the context and uh, it takes experience, I guess, but uh, really it's just a judgment call. Let's also talk about systematic error. Think of systematic error as meaning a mistake. I mean, it's not necessarily, but we'll think of it that way. For example, um, if you're measuring the mass of some chemical in a beaker and you don't take the beaker mass into account, uh, then all of your mass measurements will be too high by an amount equal to the beaker mass. This is an example of systematic uncertainty. 
Another example could be if you uh, have a well-used meter stick with a worn, raggedy edge on the end here. Um, perhaps each measurement will be one millimeter too short because a millimeter has been worn off over the years of use. In that case, you'd have a one millimeter systematic error because it's affecting all your measurements in the same way. The ruler's precision is still the same as it always has been. There's still one millimeter divisions here, uh, but it's no longer accurate. You could also say the ruler is no longer calibrated. So systematic errors um, affect each measurement in the same way, in the sense that these ruler measurements would all be a millimeter too short, maybe, or in the sense that all of your mass measurements of chemical in this beaker would all be too high by an amount equal to the beaker mass itself. And uh, that's what systematic error is, is a, an error that affects every measurement in the same way. And you can kind of think of it as a mistake. Part of your job as a scientist is to eliminate systematic uncertainty as much as possible. One way to do this is to make a measurement of something that is known, such as, you know, with this ruler, we could measure the width of a piece of paper. A regular letter size piece of paper, which is eight and a half inches or 21.6 centimeters. Well, when we measure it with this ruler, we expect to get that answer. And sure enough, we have about 21.6 centimeters. And so this confirms that the ruler is uh, making accurate measurements. And so we've eliminated any uh, s systematic error, at least to the best of our abilities. Truth be told, you can't eliminate systematic uncertainty completely. Um, any decent quality measuring device is typically manufactured so that systematic uncertainty is reduced to about one of the smallest unit on full scale. And think of it as one tick mark when you have a maximum reading with your device. That's the amount of systematic uncertainty that still remains after the manufacturing process is done. They can't reduce it any more than that. With this ruler, that would mean a systematic uncertainty of one millimeter when making a full one meter measurement that would be one tick mark on full scale. Full scale is one meter and each tick mark represents a millimeter. So this ruler has one uh, millimeter of systematic uncertainty for every meter measured. So for the length measurement with a reading of 1.066 meters, the systematic uncertainty is going to be well one millimeter of uncertainty for every meter measured. We multiply these together to get about one millimeter of uncertainty. And for the width, we have a reading of 0 0.763 meters times the one millimeter systematic uncertainty for every meter measured gives us, again, about one millimeter of systematic uncertainty. You'll notice that I rounded off each of these uncertainties to one significant figure. Since uncertainty estimates are often the result of a personal judgment call, you can only keep one significant figure, or maybe at the most, two. The total uncertainty for our measurements will be the total random uncertainty plus the systematic uncertainty. So there's one millimeter of random uncertainty at each end plus the one millimeter systematic uncertainty for a total of three millimeters of uncertainty for each measurement. You should also notice the way the uncertainties are written down in the same units as the measurement. So instead of writing three millimeters to the to the right of this plus or minus, I'm writing 0 0.003 meters to keep the units the same as the measurement. It's just a more convenient way to see which significant figure this error uh, matches up with. The next thing we need to do is calculate the area and calculate the uncertainty in the area. Finding the uncertainty in a calculated quantity like area is called propagation of uncertainty. You can think of these numbers, these uncertainty numbers, propagating through the calculation to the answer. In our next video, we'll discuss the two types of formulas used to calculate uncertainty propagation. And we'll also measure and calculate the volume of the tabletop and show that the uncertainty in the thickness measurement is so significant that it swamps the errors in the width and length measurements. So stay tuned for more in this series on uncertainty analysis.